What's up everybody, Anthony here, SpecialtyMotorCars.net, and behind me I have a very, very special car to show you today. 2001 Cadillac Eldorado Touring Coupe. It's the ETC, more of a performance package, but not only is this a 2001 Eldorado Touring Coupe that makes it special because it's the second to last year of production, this is a fully converted convertible Eldorado. This car left the factory as a hardtop and went to Coach Builders Limited down in Florida. When this car was new and it was converted into a full power convertible top. It's got a beautiful white vinyl top on it. Power quarter windows. They did everything from soup to nuts. This is a sweet, sweet car. You don't see a lot of these on the road. Coach Builders didn't convert a ton of them and they're big money back in the day to do such a conversion. I've had a few of them. Papa Bear actually has a 2009 DTS convertible done by the same company. So we're going to show you all around this car. We'll put the top down, show you the inside, take it for a spin. I'll tell you what I think about it, tell you how much you want to know about it. Any questions, leave a question or a comment down below. Hit that like button if you totally like this super cool ride. Let's get into it. All right, here she is. Beautiful, beautiful white diamond, a signature color for Cadillac. A beautiful pearl white over a shale leather interior. This is an ETC Eldorado Touring Coupe. Uh, so in 2001, uh, this car left Cadillac's factory um, and it was actually sent down to Coach Builders Limited in Florida. And Coach Builders at this point had been building these cars uh, through the 90s, but they only did, I want to say maybe 60 to 75 of these cars per year. Uh, and they had two different versions. They had a hard boot or a soft boot. Uh, now in the past, I've had two of them before. Both of them were the soft boot versions. Uh, there's pros and cons to both of them, really. They're obviously both convertibles, but really what it is is the way the top is designed. Now this car, you can see the way the top comes down, it kind of comes down and then drops sharply in the back. Uh, it has a full power boot that lifts up in the back and you drop the top below it and the boot comes back down. Kind of like a lot of modern cars today. The, the I think the con with these cars is it doesn't retain the original roof line and you can kind of notice that obviously there's something going on here. Uh, the soft boot convertible cars still kind of retain that original sweeping C pillar uh, and it kind of actually still looks like an original Eldorado. Um, that C pillar, uh, you know, the way it swoops down, it almost makes the car look like it's got a canvas top and it's really convertible. But the only uh, downfall of that is it doesn't have the power hard boot. It does, it's not as refined. It's kind of like an old school convertible. We have a leather boot that you throw over it uh, to cover the top. So this was a more expensive option. Uh, this is a little rarer of a car to find with the hard boot conversion. Uh, but this is a really, really cool car. 34,000 original miles on this car. Uh, I've probably put about 400 miles on this car in my time of having it here. Uh, it's springtime and summertime is right around the corner and I know people are going to be looking for uh, convertibles. So now is the time to sell this beautiful, this is a gorgeous summer car. Uh, like I said, it's a beautiful uh, white diamond with a white top and the top is in phenomenal shape on this car. That's another common thing. You know, most of the time these cars, the first and second owners, they paid a ton of money for these cars. The first owner paying a lot. Uh, the conversion for these cars range anywhere from twenty to $24,000 uh, in the dealer markup. Uh, you know, so it, back then, you know, if you're spending $50,000 on a car plus a $20,000 conversion for a convertible, you know, you took good care of the car. Second owner, you know, if it was a five-year-old car or something like that, still probably paid a good premium for this car. But then unfortunately, these cars end up in the third and fourth owners, and they usually don't take care of them as good as the first owner does. Um, you know, if they're not garaged, if they're not cared for, they really start to show age. And this one is, is so, so well loved and cared for. This beautiful original top on the car. You can see all the stitching is in phenomenal shape. The top is super, super clean. It shows very, very minor, just, I would say, normal creases or anything like that. Uh, it's just such such a nice top white. It's got the tempered glass in the back with the defroster There's no tears. There's no split seams. It's still very soft at this point if these cars are used and abused and not garaged You don't find the original tops on these cars to be this nice 
Uh, this is this is what's so nice about this car, is the uh, condition of this original white vinyl top. Um, so, you know, these cars age, they start to look a little ragged, and that's kind of like the end of their life. This car has been really well loved, 34,000 miles. It's obviously been garage and well kept through the years. Uh, and that's what's kind of really hard to find on these cars. You can see here where they cut it. They brought the original pillar right up. They cut it here. They kind of finished this section off to have the top. You come around with power quarter windows. This is all custom made here. Even this whole tub section is custom made. And this right here is the power boot that by the touch of the button in the, uh, under the dash or on the side of the dash, uh, this boot will raise up. You get your third brake light right there. The boot will raise up and the top will go in. And we're gonna do that uh, in just a minute. But I just wanted to show you while the top was up, how nice this top looks. And it actually looks really, you know, I guess if you're not an Eldorado person, you might not pick up on it. Uh, but those Eldorado people or the people who know these cars well, know that this is a convertible just by that roof line. Uh, but I think it's actually a pretty good, pretty good look. I think they did it really well, you know, Coach Builders was making a car that Cadillac never made. You know, so fit, finish, quality is good. Um, it's not GM quality. You know, but this car isn't really something you use as a daily driver anymore. This car, you know, is a weekend cruiser, a golf club, or a country club cruiser. That's probably what this car was originally <laughs> owned for, especially with that kind of mileage. And you can tell that the car was in a gated community uh, when it spent some time down in Florida. So I'm going to start it up. We're going to put that top down and I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. All right. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to put the top down in these cars. Now on both sides of the header here, you can see there's a little Velcro strip that hides your convertible top latches. Uh, simply reveal those latches. Both of them come undone. And then in this car, you have a button right here on the lower dash. Now we're gonna push that down. You're gonna see that tonneau open, quarter windows go down. Now one of the things that I don't think was really as well thought out on these cars, but it is what it is, is both of these latches have to be latched back down. So when the top goes down into the car, the tonneau can come down and sit level. Uh, but you can see here how cool this is with the tonneau cover open. You know, this was all thought by somebody. Somebody engineered this and they actually did a really good job. These tops are very robust um, and they, they're, they're actually built really well, uh, you know, for the time. So we're gonna push the button on the down. goes right in the back there, the tonneau comes down, and it's gone. Now, these two sections here are still exposed, and what Coach Builders did was include two little boots, which I have in the trunk. I'll show you how to put those on in a minute. That kind of slip in here and latch on here to kind of give you that nice finished look. But with the tonneau down, you can see it's a real nice clean look uh, on this car. Come back here. Yeah, you're styling and profiling in this car. Now the top is down and you're ready for summertime enjoyment. Wasn't that cool how that went down? Uh, all thought up after I left the factory. Uh, now Cadillac uh, didn't commission coach builders to do this. This was something that they did and they, these cars were offered new through some select Cadillac dealers uh, who specialized in these cars. There was a few of them out there that sold a lot of these. There was some that sold just a few of these. Uh, but these are really cool when back in the day they were sitting on the showroom floor uh, and you really wanted something cool, a four-seater convertible. You know, you think back to when this car was around, what else was there that could com comfortably seat four people? Chrysler Sebring convertible, 
you know, something like that. You want a little bit of style, a little bit of pizzazz showing up to the country club. Uh, something like this would have been perfect for you. Drop the top, take it up there, go play a round of golf, uh, and then meet at the clubhouse afterwards. Now this car, uh, this car came out of an estate in New Jersey. Uh, before that, the car, most of these cars originated out of Florida. Um, there was a lot of them that came up out of Illinois. There was a, a dealership up there that sold a lot of them. But this car originated out of Florida. I think it was Bayview Cadillac. Uh, there's a sticker under the hood. I can show you in just a minute. But let's go around. I'm gonna show you uh, some close-ups of the rest of the car after I showed you the top and uh then we'll get in on the interior now you can see here beautiful like i said uh white diamond paint it's got a black and gray two-tone uh thin pinstripe that goes along both sides beautiful paint on the hood all on the grill now the etc's had all color matched it was all monotone trim the grill the bumper trim here uh stuff like that was all monotone to the car to kind of give it that more european -y, sporty look there are some minor chips and you know little divots here and there some of this is just like bugs that i must have picked up on the way but some light scrapes down on the bottom here uh painted license plate bracket you come down here you see a little uh divot not a crack but a little divot right there in the paint by the fog light a few little stone chips throughout a little scuff here scuff there down on the bottom here though there is a scuff on the lowest section you really can't notice it uh, when you're standing up tall i do love the old school crest and wreath on these cars before they went to the modern style uh what's another cool thing about these cars is these still had glass headlights so these didn't you know turn yellow or, or craze over uh plastic corner lights but i've never really seen these things yellow out uh and the cool thing traditional cadillac has cornering lights as well Come along the passenger side here again you can see that uh, stripe going down both sides uh, a really really nice way to set the car off uh, brand new vogue tires i just had these tires installed uh, the, this car when i bought it had black wall tires they were quite old i really love the way that these vogues set these cars off with these etc spoke wheels got the old school cadillac emblem in the center come down the side here See all the mirrors are in really nice shape. Up the pillar here, the windshield is in nice shape. No chips or cracks or anything like that. Come down the side here. There is a light scrape right here on that door molding. I do like the way that these door handles are too. They're kind of like flush mounted, but still the old school, you know, lift up, flip up style. Come along here and you can see a few minor little chips right on the door edge molding there and then that same scrape that must have scraped there you can see scraped and rubbed here now this i tried getting out i think a little bit more love might take this uh color transfer scrape off but then you can see here there's a minor chip there a chip there and a slight little divot right there on the wheel opening now uh, you come to the back here, another brand new Vogue tire, uh, the custom built white and yellow mustard and mayo as most know. And then these are original, I think that's kind of cool how uh, they put the GM logo right there. Uh, full power antenna, these are standard on this era El Dorado, gives it a nice look when it's down. This hard tonneau cover is Coach Builders added along with all this. And then the other cool thing that they did, or they had to do, uh, but they did it so seamlessly, essentially, is they split the seat and shrunk it just a little bit in width. So it's not as wide. You can still fit three back here. It's a little tighter. Um, I actually put my daughter's car seat back there and she fit and she loved this car. Uh, what I do really like about the Cadillac Eldorados of this vintage is they didn't forget their Cadillac roots with these long tail lights kind of got a little bit of a fin i know that's not much of a fin but it's a little bit of a fin and then that follows down onto the fender i really like the fender design how it just kind of like it's got that nice crisp edge on it uh but we'll come back around the corner here again very minor a little bit of paint cracking you know so from someone maybe bumping it and uh leaving an impression there uh and you can see here it's very subtle 
but Coach Builders Limited was the manufacturer of this car, and they put these emblems on those lighted uh, side lights. ETC of the Etcetera car, Eldorado, all monotone, chrome on the ESC versions, 32 valve North Star, uh, beautiful, beautiful paint on this car. Like I said, uh, white diamond, a few minor little chips. I think there was a little bit of a license plate uh, screw puck mark there. I uh, come around here, a little bit of a scratch there, a couple down below as well. Uh, tail lights are in nice shape. Now the Coach Builders emblem, both sides. Uh, my dad's DTS, those DeVilles, they put them on the doors. I like this a little better. It's kind of subtle. You don't really notice it, but when you notice it, you can't unnotice it. Uh, you come up to the tonneau cover here, and there's a few little chips that somebody had touched up once. Uh, there's a little rubber gasket in there. Uh, you can see where they got a little bit of that touch-up paint on, but both sides had chips here uh, that were touched up at one point. Come along this quarter panel. Uh, another 16-inch wide track touring Vogue. Uh, these wheels are in such nice condition, no corrosion. You know, even if you go right deep inside there, you can see how nice and clean those wheels are. Uh, really a testament to how well this car was cared for because a lot of people know these Cadillac chrome wheels would start to peel and bubble. Uh, it wasn't uncommon to see. Now, I know this quarter panel has been refinished. Uh, when I got the car in, it actually didn't have a stripe on here. So I had the car striped uh, to match what was originally there. Uh, around the rest of the car is all painted stripe. This uh, was done in a vinyl tape. I really didn't think it was gonna look as good as it does, but it matches perfectly. Uh, but you can see here that is consistent down the side. Come up over the top here. Still has the baby seat anchors. I know because I just used those when I put my daughter's seat in there. A couple little chips right here on the door edge. Come down the side here, the mirrors are in nice shape. Doors are in good shape, fenders again. Another custom built Vogue tire, the mustard and mayo. And I just love these Cadillac centered emblems. You can see nice rotors in there. Come around here, there's the money shot right there. Oh, I love it, I absolutely love it. This is such a fun car to drive. And I mean, it grabs attention everywhere because not a lot of people know about these cars, but when they see you driving down the road, especially with the Vogues and the chrome wheels, uh, really, this car just stands out. So I will put that disclaimer in there. If you're looking for a convertible that isn't going to grab attention everywhere you go, this is definitely not the car for you. This car is a very cool car, attention grabbing, but a super comfortable car. It's got heated front seats, air conditioning, seating for four comfortably. Fifth, if you got small kids in the back. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of a modern, fun convertible, we'll say. I don't know. It's very, very cool, and I absolutely love it. All right, now let's show you the inside of the super cool Eldorado. Now, aside from, uh, you know, modifying the top header bow here, uh, then kind of shrinking the back seat up just a little bit, the inside of this car really remains the same. Um, the door panels, the seats, all that stuff. Obviously, you can see the, the way they intricated the seat belts here uh, is a little different. Uh, but aside from that, the doors weren't really modified uh, extensively. All the glass uh, and everything is original on the side doors. Quarter windows uh, were made by coach builders. But let's show you the inside here. Beautiful shale leather, it has a nice um, Tempura wood, the real wood here. And what's cool is they integrated a Eldorado into an Eldorado. This would be a four uh, window switch uh, plate out of like a Seville of the same era. They had very similar interior setups. So that was pretty seamlessly done there. You can see all inside the door jams are nice and clean. Painted sill. And then you come around here and you can see the manufacturer uh, date. This one was manufactured in March of 2001. Beautiful wood grained steering wheel. I really like that. Nice dash pad. It's not all warped up, which is another testament to how this car was kept 
definitely indoors. Um, you know, all the switches and stuff like that. I'll show you that stuff uh, in just a minute. Center console, got the wood trim there with the heated seat uh, buttons. The center stack. Driver's seat is in really nice shape. The leather is really, really nice. You know, it has normal crease marks, I guess, from normal wear and tear. And I do believe there was a repair right here on the uh, driver's seat. Something, something was repaired. I don't know if it was a little cut or something like that uh, at one point. In the back here, we'll flip this seat forward. You can see seating is pretty good back here. I mean, you got some uh, normal, <laughs> you know, leg room. Obviously, it's a two-door. These cars weren't overly generous with back seat space, you know, but it's comfortable. You can sit right down there. You have seat belts, uh, shoulder belts in the back, and then a uh, lap belt for the center uh, on the side here. There's little lights underneath here. And then they get the uh, factory ashtray. I'll come around the passenger side. door panel a little pocket right there a little map pocket on the side inside the jams are nice and clean dual power with four-way uh, lumbar and again you can see here dash pad is in really nice shape even the wood here this is common to see this crack this is real wood um, and it usually cracks coming off the vents and stuff like that all in really really nice shape the carpeting is in really nice shape as well. This passenger seat shows really, really nicely, uh, nice and soft. And again, one of these cars that always sat out in the sun with the top down would bake the interior. These cars really weren't made or, or GM didn't intend them to be convertibles. So the interior material wasn't made to withstand, you know, a lot of heat and temperature. So to find one of these cars that wasn't really used as a convertible, the condition of the top tells you that and the uh, condition of the interior. The top hasn't been down a million times where it's all worn out and the seats aren't all dry and crispy. You know, they're still very, very soft. You know, there's no splitting up on the top here. This is a very common spot for it to get real dry and tight and start to split. This one shows really, really well. Again, got the ETC with the perforated leather. Side bolster is nice on this one. Center console. Flip the seat forward here. And you have the rear seat area. And again, just like the other side, you have a little light under here. A little flip open ashtray. Uh, shoulder belts on both sides. And then in the center here is a flip out armrest with a cup holder for your back seat drivers. Actually, the back seat cup holder, I want to argue and say is better than the front seat cup holder. All right. Now, sitting behind the wheel of one of these Eldorados, I mean, the headroom is nice. You feel real comfortable. Um, you got the sun visors right here. Uh, but essentially, you're, you're like sitting in a original Eldorado. There's no roof modifications to lower the roof. It's the same height. Um, so that, you know, you feel comfortable in the car. Uh, now, starting the car up... Before I do, I have one set of keys for this car. It's the old style VATS key, which I think are pretty readily available. And then the old style GM key for the, the circle key. I don't know what this key is for, but it was on there. And I feel like if I throw it away, I'm gonna find out. But, uh, and then an original remote here with the lock, unlock, and then the fuel door and the trunk button. Now, one of the crazy things that I never understood about Cadillac is why the hell would you put a fuel door release on your key fob? like? Where do you go to say, oh, here, let me get that for you. Boop, boop. Like if you pull up to a gas pump, you hit the fuel door release there or the trunk release. There. I get it on, you know, with groceries or whatnot, but the fuel door, I mean, come on. Seems absolutely silly. You can see here you got uh, two big gauges right in the middle. And I know that thing's flickering. I can see it but it's really not doing that. You get away from it, you get up close to it, and it goes away. Uh, it's the LED pixels, like I say, getting picked up by the camera. Anyways, we'll shade that for you. 34,075 miles. I've put three, 300 
and 95 miles on this car. Uh, before we get too far into it, we are gonna pop that trunk and we're gonna pop that hood and I'm gonna show you that North Star and the trunk space. All right, reach under this egg crate grill to re receive a North Star 32 valve V8. Now I know in the comments, everybody gets to comment and speak their mind and make their opinions. Uh, these Cadillac North Stars were the only engines that were available with these cars. So if you want something like this, this is what you deal with. Um, are these cars the best when it comes to oil leakage? No, they all usually are wet. Um, did they have plague issues, especially in the 90s with head gaskets? Of course. A lot of it came down to maintenance and how a car was maintained. These cars needed regular coolant changes, get that deck spool out of there, uh, and have regular green antifreeze that wasn't as bad for these engines. Normal maintenance like that really prolonged the life of these. And these North Stars are very robust. Um, but you can see under here how clean it is. I thought I said Bayview, I did. <coughs> Bless me. DeVoe Cadillac out of Naples, Florida. Now Naples, I mean, if there's any a place to have a car like this, it would be Naples. Uh, but it's got all the plastic trimming under here. You wash the fluid, your fuses. Um, I like how Cadillac kind of made it idiot proof and you know made these little charts here so transmission fluid is red okay look for the red there it is brake fluid silver washer fluid blue engine oil bam power steering orange and coolant it's over here deck spool but i usually recommend to take the deck spool out of here but very clean engine bay uh, i don't know what the heck happened here if chewbacca came in and just scraped that off i don't know how that even happens uh, but it's pretty clean, pretty tidy uh, for a car of this age. And they did still have an under hood light, which I thought was pretty cool. Close that down. We'll come around to the back here and show you the trunk. Uh, now in the back, I already mentioned to you that I had these two little jelly beans. Um, but I also have all four factory floor mats. Um, and then underneath here... Below, you can see there's a spare tire with the jack and everything it also has the original cargo net now some of the trunk space is cut down obviously there's the tub right there so when the top is down you kind of you lose a little bit in most convertibles you do that uh, all behind here is all your pump down on the bottom here uh, you have drains you have uh, the fuse uh, panel uh, that Cadillac actually put in these from the factory in the trunk uh, that's relocated down there Everything is really serviceable back there. Now, one of the m probably common questions that you're going to have about these cars, and I'm going to address that right now, is maintenance. Like, who can fix these cars? So I'm actually very fortunate from where I am that I have a good friend in this industry. His name is George. He's over at Elite Motor Cars. He actually has a YouTube channel if you want to check him out, George at Elite Motor Cars. Now, he knows a lot about these cars. Uh, he collects these cars. Um... If anybody has the weirdest obsession with these Eldorado convertibles, it's him. But the benefit to that is he knows these cars inside and out. Um, you know, how the top mechanisms work. He knows how to take these cars apart. He knows how to rebuild anything. Top pistons, pumps, all that stuff. He's really knowledgeable. So I'm very fortunate to be near him. He was able to help me out with just tracking down a few little Eldorado pieces. But he came up and checked this car out for me. And he was actually amazed how nice the car was. Uh, you know, he agrees with me, the top and everything. It shows that this car wasn't really used as a convertible. So check him out. But in the event that you bought something like this, you buy this one or you have one of these cars, check George out and check him out for any kind of questions or anything like that. He's more than happy to help you uh, with that. So there, there is aftermarket support. Uh, obviously, I'm up here in the Northeast, but he can maybe help you over the phone or something like that. So check him out uh, on YouTube and give him a call if you have any questions. All right, the top is down, my sunglasses on, the plate's on the back, let's go for a spin. All right, now one of the other things that I usually tell you is the type of maintenance that I do to these cars. Uh, and this one, this car was pretty extensive. So you can see here from my favorite local auto repair shop, I had this car serviced over there. They did a check over, grease oil filter, uh, I told them to do brakes, struts, 
uh, which I supplied them the struts, mount and balance the tires that I provided, uh, perform oil change, fluids, uh, do an AC compressor, front struts, yada, yada, yada. You can see all that stuff there. So, uh, oh, and <laughs> wiper blades, wheel bearings, CV axles. Uh, one thing that they did note was half of the third brake light is burned out. It's an LED assembly. Uh, and then some of the parts that they provided, they did a license plate bulb, new valve stems in the uh, wheels, uh, engine oil filter. Forgive me for being clumsy. Synthetic engine or synthetic blend engine oil, AC detective dye, refrigerant oil, 134 refrigerant front wheel hub bearing, front axle assembly, two wiper blades, engine air filter, uh, two sway bar links. Uh, and actually, so they <laughs> turned the front and rear rotors. Uh, I gave them the okay to go ahead and replace the rotors. It had a little bit of a brake pulsation uh, when I had had the car. And you can see here, they actually did an alignment as well when they put those new struts and tires on. So when I dropped this car off uh, for service, I instructed them to uh, replace some struts. I did all four struts all the way around uh, the front and the rear. The rear are like an air shock and then the front were... Uh, struts uh, so they did shocks and struts all the way around they mounted my brand new vogue tires uh, i instructed them to replace the brakes in the car pads and rotors because they were uh, pulsating just a little bit um, and then just go over the car uh, you know as a general over overlook um, so the things that they found were that the pads and rotors on this car and i didn't believe it until they showed me they were like brand new uh, they had a little bit of a rust buildup on the front, I think, from sitting. Uh, so they actually had them machined. And I was a little skeptical at first, but I've probably put 200 miles on and they're smooth as butter. Uh, so those were serviced. Uh, the AC compressor had a little bit of a noise in it when the AC wasn't on. Uh, it was kind of hard to hear, but I could kind of hear it. It almost sounded like a power steering noise like maybe the the clutch or something inside was starting to give way so we put a brand new ac delco gm ac compressor they charged that and then when they were under there they noticed that the uh, i believe it was the left front axle boot was torn kind of losing a little bit of grease and that the hub, front hub assembly had a very minor bit of play so we had that replaced as well along with wiper blades and stuff like that um you know but i, I really do pride myself in the service Oh yeah, looking good, looking good. Reflection check. Uh, I do pride myself in the service of these cars. Four new tires, essentially new brakes, new wish brakes, I won't take credit there. Um, the uh, battery is a brand new AC Delco battery, uh, front axle, front hub bearing, wiper blades, oil change, struts. I know I'm probably repeating myself. Um, you know, but all in all, between that bill, I think was like $1,600. The tires were another $1,200, $1,300. Uh, and then the struts and shocks all the way around were like seven or $800. Uh, you know, AC compressor, all that stuff. I don't skimp with these cars. I want them to be turnkey, and I want to offer nice summer-ready cars, driving-ready cars, whatever that type of car is. In this case, a summer cruiser. All right, let's cruise. Now, when I tell you there's a night and day difference, there is a night and day difference. With four new tires and new struts all the way around on this car, uh, it drives as nice as it, as it was meant to be driven you know, back then. Now, one thing I will say, like most convertibles, you get a little bit of um, pillar chatter, I'll say, uh, but really they reinforce these cars. And on the bottom of these, they ran piping and tubing and reinforcement all down the sides of the car. Uh, they really did a good job to structurally, you know, beef these cars up for their conversion. Coach Builders Limited down in Florida isn't like a fly-by-night facility. They're actually still in business today, and today they're not converting Cadillacs really anymore, uh, but they're converting Dodge Challengers, uh, Chrysler 300s, they do Ford 300s. It's really cool some of the stuff that they do. Uh, they did change names. Coach Builders was changed over to... Uh, drop top customs, but still today in business, uh, that's the same company and they do a really good job on their new cars.
Now there's really nothing better than this. Cruising, top down, wind in your hair, nice wood steering wheel to grab a hold to and just cruise. Take it to the beach, you know, put some chairs in the back, go down to the boardwalk, take your girl, take your kids. Cruising in a drop top Cadillac is nothing better. And these cars got a lot of get up and go. These ETCs, uh, you know, really got a punch to it. You know, I'm cruising nicely at 40 miles an hour. After we get past this merging traffic, I'm gonna punch you and we're gonna show you what this car kicks down and does. She gets up and moves. Real, real quick. Brakes are as smooth as butter. There you have it, folks. That's the Eldorado convertible, 34,000 miles, fully serviced. It's ready to go for your summertime enjoyment. Uh, my name is Anthony. Phone number is 978-930-1004. Anybody want to get in contact me about this car or ask any questions, there's my number. Uh, price of this car, everybody's going to ask what that is. Price of this car is going to be $17,995. Uh, on this Eldorado ETC coach build convertible. Now we're cruising back. I got the top up, and you can see how really well refined it is in here. They got a headliner and everything. I'm not sure if I showed you that in the beginning. I think I did. I'm not sure. Uh, either way, uh, this car was well built, well designed, well thought out for the time period. and is ready for your summertime enjoyment. My name is Anthony, 978-930-1004. Again, appreciate everybody for watching. Thank you so much. Check out my website, specialtymotorcars.net. Check me out on Instagram, specialtymotorcarsnh, Facebook as well. And don't forget, hit that merch store. If you see anything you like over there, we got the Papa Bear and Anthony t-shirts, keychains, license plates, you name it. More stuff coming. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll talk to you on the next one. All right, I know this video is already super long, but I just want to give you a quick look at the bottom of this Eldorado ETC convertible uh, to show you, obviously, the new struts, air struts, new brakes, new tires. Uh, but you can see how clean this car is, aside from a little dirt, uh, how clean it is rust-wise. Uh, still got some factory chalk markings and tags and stuff like that on the bottom. Uh, and here you can see the reinforcement that coach builders did down both sides of the car. Uh, you have a reinforcement bar going down the outer rocker. Uh, and that blocks off to a reinforcement that goes, I don't know, frame rails? I don't know what you want to call that. Um, but all the brake lines, fuel lines are nice and clean, cross members. Um, let's see here, we got new links, struts, stabilizer links, greasable, new front pads, rotors, oh no, those are the machined ones, new axle on this side, new hub bearing on this side, uh, new struts as you can see there, uh, transmission pan, oil pan is a little damp, I don't see anything actively dripping there. Uh, fresh oil change, some scrapes on the front of the uh, engine cradle as the rear lower valance and it looks like there's a little bit of a split in the bottom of the cover. Maybe they caught something at one point, but pretty dry otherwise and pretty clean for a 2001 Cadillac Eldorado. Any questions, give me a call, 978-930-1004.